We begin, though, keeping them honest with something else the president is saying on the stump. And like many things this president says, despite the blowback, he has no regrets. This is what he said last night, talking about Montana Congressman Greg Gianforte, who last year physically assaulted a reporter who was asking him a policy question during his campaign. And by the way, never wrestle him. You understand that? Never. Any guy that can do a body slam, he's my kind of... He's my guy. I shouldn't say this because there's nothing to be embarrassed about. So I was in Rome with a lot of the leaders from other countries, talking about all sorts of things. And I heard about it. And we endorsed Greg very early. But I had heard that he body slammed a reporter. So that's what he said last night, and the crowd ate it up. And just to remind you, here's audio of the assault that they were cheering and that the president was admiring. To the CBO score, because you know you were waiting to make your decision about health care until you saw the bill and it just came out. And, what yeah, you and we'll talk to you about that later. Yeah, but there's not going to be time. I'm just curious if you okay, have Okay, speak right with now. Shane, please. But you don't Guys, the last time you came in here, you did the same thing. Get the hell out of here. Get the hell out of here. The last guy did the same thing. You were the guardian? Yes, and you just broke my glasses. You, the last guy did the same damn thing. You just body slammed me and broke my glasses. Get the hell out of here. Congressman Gene Forte and his campaign spokesman both initially gave misleading accounts of the incident. However, in the end, the congressman pleaded guilty to misdemeanor assault. He also apologized to the reporter he attacked, Ben Jacobs, who's going to join me shortly. In other words, Congressman Gianforte expressed at least some degree of regret for what he did. Whether he felt it or not, it's impossible to get into his head, but he expressed it. President Trump, on the other hand, had no regrets when asked late today for using the physical assaults on another human being as a stump speech applause line. No, no, no not at all. Not this different world. That was a different league, a different world. No, he's just a great guy, and he's a... He's, you know Greg very well, right? It was, uh, that was a tremendous success last night in Montana, and uh, Greg is a tremendous person, and he's a tough cookie, and I'll stay with that. Uh, it's a diff you're talking about a different world. Now, it's not exactly clear what the President of the United States meant by a different world or a different league. On the other hand, he was perfectly clear about having no regrets. Keep him honest, though, even as the president was endorsing an act of violence by a Republican candidate for Congress, he was also at the very same rally saying this. The Democrats have truly turned into an angry mob bent on destroying anything or anyone in their path. Gee, that kind of sounds like the president believes that violence on the campaign trail or the threat of it is a bad thing. And at least one staunch conservative seemed to notice, former Tea Party Republican uh, Joe Walsh, tweeting, quote, the president encourages and applauds physical violence against a journalist. Hey, Republicans, don't ever complain again about violence coming from the left. So there's that. There's also the sad and simple fact that the president of the United States is yucking it up about the assault on one reporter while he himself is embroiled in the Khashoggi crisis, the killing, the murder, the dismemberment of a journalist. And it's not like it could have slipped his mind or anything. Just a few hours before that rally, the president spoke about it on camera, conceding that Jamal Khashoggi was probably dead, possibly at the hands of a strategic ally. Dead, the Saudis now say, after a quarrel and physical altercation. Turkish officials say otherwise, citing audio and his murder and dismemberment. Now, clearly, whatever it turns out to be, it is a world away in every sense from what appears to have been an act of spontaneous violence by a hot-headed candidate. And clearly, the president's love of tough cookies, as he calls them, is matched only by his antipathy for the press. The question is, at a time like this, when dozens of journalists have been killed this year, with one at the center of a strategic crisis, why didn't any of that seem to factor in the president's thinking or speaking last night? And why, when this president is ramping up the rhetoric against Democrats for what he says is mob-like behavior, is he applauding violence, actual violence, by the man he's campaigning for? Joining us now, the reporter who you heard a moment ago being assaulted by then-candidate Gianforte, Ben Jacobs of The Guardian. This is his first time talking about the president's mention of it. Ben, thanks for being with us. Um, I, I guess the first question is just what went through your mind when you heard those comments from the president last night? Um, it, it was sort of shock and dismay that I always 
you know, knew that that was a possibility, but there's, a, there's then the process of how you deal with it and then, the, then how you actually call up and tell your family that the president is uh, mocking, mocking you uh, when you've been a victim of a crime. I mean, and today the, the president said he had no regrets uh, about what he said. I guess that doesn't surprise you. Uh, no, it doesn't. As someone who actually covered this president on the campaign trail for 18 months, I'm very familiar with, uh, with, with his MO. You know, interviewed him a couple of times, and that didn't surprise me. Um, it, I, wish, I, wish, I wish he had surprised me in that, but it was, it was what it was. For all the president's talk about Gene Forte being a tough guy and a tough cookie, I mean, he was such a tough cookie that th he was misleading initially about what he actually did to you, as were people in his campaign. Yes, no, he, he, he lied about me until he realized there was audio and eyewitnesses, that, uh, you know, that it was not the actions of a tough cookie. A tough cookie doesn't attack someone uh, out of nowhere without provocation for asking a question about health care policy. The police actually asked me afterwards, was there anything about the Congressional Budget Office that might have set him off? And then lie about it, that that's, that's not the action of a tough cookie, that's, that's the action of a, of a coward. Yeah, and a coward lies about it, which is what he did, and, and his campaign people did a, as well. So, I mean, I, I just really find it amazing that the president is praising him as a tough cookie uh, when this is a guy who assaulted you out of nowhere um, and then lies about it. Uh, it's just incredible to me. Your, your publication, The Guardian, said in a statement that the president should apologize for these comments. Do you want an apology? I mean, it would be great if there was one. I'm not holding my breath. I mean, my concern is not not about my, my, my situations as much as it is with Jamal Khashoggi and everything going on in the world, that the signal this sends about how the United States and how the President of the United States views journalists when 44 journalists have been killed this year is what's really the concern. And that, you know, what I'm going through, it's not fun, I'll get over it, but there are people reporting all across the world right now who are actually, you know, in fear of their lives and that what this does is, you know, is a blank check for governments who want to crack down on a free press in places that don't have the First Amendment. Yeah, I mean, it's entirely possible. I mean, it's not within the realm of, uh, uh, out of the realm of possibility that the president might, you know, at one point say, wow, well, you know, MBS had a really strong reaction to, uh, to Jamal Khashoggi. You know, it was a really powerful reaction. I mean, you have no idea, there's no telling what this president actually thinks about what happened to Jamal Khashoggi. Um, you, Steve Scalise, Republican congressman, said the president was, was clearly joking uh, at this rally and said, quote, it's obvious he was not encouraging his supporters to engage in attacks. Is that clear to you? Because it's certainly not clear to me. Yeah, I, I've certainly, Steve Scalise has been through a lot, and I've certainly, my, my heart goes out to him and what he's been through. But, you know, I, I, I maybe has a better sense of humor than me because I didn't hear a punchline there. I didn't hear a joke there. He's also pointing to reporters in the back when talking about, you know, who to body slam, um, I, I don't know. I, I, I just keep going back to the fact that you were just doing your job. You were asking a question, you know, you asked it more than once and because you knew you weren't going to get an answer and he was trying to basically blow you off and all you did is ask a question and you got body slammed and the President of the United States celebrated that, that last night. Uh, a celebrated guy convicted of assaulting you. Yeah, it's 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 still it's it's mind-boggling and it's sort of still a little bit tough to 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 wrap my head around. But this this is the world we live in today, and having been through, been through you know, been through this over the past year and a half, and how it's sort of you know the initial shock and then this. It's 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 unfortunately what may be hopefully at least only in the short term the new normal. Yeah. Ben Jacobs, I appreciate your time. Thank you, Ben. Thank you.